How many of you guys work with your spouse? Raise your hand. How many of you work in a business where there are spouses in upper level management or involved at the business? So you guys know some of the challenges that lie ahead for you when you're involved with your spouse or in a company that has spouses. Um, and when Matt and I first decided to open Peer Green, we were in our couples counseling session um, and we told our counselor that we wanted to open up the business together. And she told us this interesting uh, statistic where it reminded us that the divorce rate is 50% um, for American couples. And when you choose to work together, that per uh, percentage goes up to 85%. <laughs> so we were really hard to stay in that 15%. And I have to add that that counselor actually kicked us out of counseling a few weeks later, so what does she know anyway? <laughs> But seriously, that, that is a pretty daunting statistic, and um, it, it probably would have given a lot of people pause. It, it didn't really for us, and a lot of that had to do with what we had already been through as a couple um, and working together up until that point. Uh, when we first met, uh, you know, there was a pretty strong connection right away, but Megan told me in no uncertain terms that she had no interest in dating a pot grower. I wanted to date someone who had a real job. <laughs> So that segued into what we've started to call our dating period. And it consisted of us not speaking for a month, running into each other, having a great night together, waking up the next morning terrified and not speaking for a month. <laughs> and um, we did that for a while, but eventually the connection was really just too strong. And, you know, Megan realized she had to overcome her aversion to pot growers and, and we had to figure it out. And so, you know, we, we got together and eventually we started to live together. Um, but even at that point, you know, this was a while back, we had a grow in our house. Megan didn't really go into the grow room. Uh, you know, if I needed an extra set of hands, I'd call a friend to help me. If I wasn't around to water or feed, I would get someone else to do it. It was just a line that she didn't cross. And, you know, that worked for us for a while. And then in 2003, Matt got sick. Um, became chronically ill for 10 years. And we ended up having to hire an employee to work in our house. And those of you that have to hire employees to work in your work facility know how challenging that is. Finding an employee to work in your house is a whole different set of challenges. Um, and I'm the type of person where my house is my sanctuary and I like things a certain way. So it was a challenge for me to have that relationship keep going. And so. I came up with this idea that I would start to work in the garden and we could put that barrier behind us and I formulated my spreadsheets and I made my graphs and I got my footnotes ready to talk to Matt about our big plan of peeling off the unemployee and the plan of how I could be more integrated in the, uh, the garden and that began my cannabis cultivation internship under the apprenticeship of Matt Wallstatter. <laughs> So very few people are fortunate enough to have that opportunity, but in any case, um, the first issue that we really ran into um, revolved around communication. Um, I was really sick, I wasn't able to do a lot, and so a lot of what had to happen was I had to explain to Megan how to do something so that she could go ahead and do it. And what we found very quickly was that the way that I explained things didn't really work very well with the way that Megan learned. And so there was more than one instance where we, a project didn't get done that day because we couldn't get through the part where I tell Megan how to do it. And <laughs> so, you know, I had to learn how to explain things in a way that worked better for Megan, and she had to learn to have a little bit of patience with my explanations. Still a work in progress. <laughs> Still a work in progress. Um, the one thing that was um, that I kind of bring to our world is systems and organization. And with Matt not being down in the room at first, I was really able to kind of ground into where things were and how we were using the space. Um, and, you know, Matt and I have very different styles of organization. I come from the school where you know, everything has a place and you put it back in its place so you can find it the next time you want to use it. <laughs> where Matt's philosophy is more, I put it down where I last had it and then I remember where I used it last when I come back in the room. 
So you can imagine how many measuring cups I found all over our garden. <laughs> because you just buy a new one if you can't find the old one. Um, so, you know, that took a little bit for me to kind of, I had to wrap my head around and kind of become Matt a little bit in the room. Like, if I was Matt, where would I have left, left this? <laughs> and Matt? On the flip side, I had to remember, where did I find this thing so I could put it back? And <laughs> so we, we, found, we found our compromise on organization as well. And, you know, we, we hit a, a decent groove for a while. And then we decided to open Pure Green and everything changed again. And when I say it changed, everything got bigger, it got more complicated, it got more difficult. And it introduced a whole new set of challenges into our working slash home slash married relationship. And one of the biggest things I think for all of us in cannabis, it doesn't matter if you're working with your spouse, is how do we not get consumed by the pace of everything? So when we first opened the shop, Matt worked every day for six months. And coming out of our nice, like half retired underground grower lifestyle. That was a big adjustment for our family. Um, our son was in half day preschool, then he had to be in full day preschool. You know, Matt wasn't home every day for six months. Um, so we set up rules, because the systems person likes to have those rules. Um, <laughs> when he first started taking a one day off a week, it was Sunday. So the rule was no talking about work on Sundays with each other. If we had to do work, we just had to like go hide somewhere and not have that be the, the, the whole conversation because it just takes over. So easy to let it take over. One of the other things that we also um, implemented early on was no talking about work after 10 p.m. Um, you know, we both have different styles of how we get ready for the day the next day and you know, setting that time allowed us to have some downtime where we could just have it be quiet. So what Megan's talking about is when both of us wind up consumed by work. But the other real big challenge was what happens when one person's in work mode and the other person is not, and how do you navigate that? And so one of the things that happened early on is that Megan would leave in the afternoon and go pick up our son and you know, get him home from school and you know dinner and bath and bedtime. And I'd be at work and I'd think of a work question. I'd call her and text her and she'd be trying to make dinner and keep him from having a tantrum and be super annoyed by the fact that I wanted to talk about work right now. And after a little while, a few months probably, I started to figure out that Maybe it was a bad idea to call or text during, during that time of day. And so that was another rule early on, is no work questions from five to seven. I'd either catch her beforehand or I'd wait, wait until afterwards. Now, you know, that, that, that issue still comes up. You know, she might be sitting on the couch, it's you know, 10.30 at night, we're watching a TV show, and she's doing some bookkeeping stuff, and I'm relaxing and unwinding, and all of a sudden it's, did you spend $1,200 at this company on January 13, 2015? <laughs> I don't, I probably, but I don't know, and I don't remember, and I don't have my records in front of me, and I don't want to talk about it anyway. And so, another rule that we came up with um, is that if one person doesn't want to talk about work, you just say so. If I say, I, I can't think about the work question right now, then that's it. We shut it down, and you know, we pick up the conversation later when both people are, are Ready to, ready to address it. And you know, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work so great, but as a general guiding principle, it's been really helpful. Uh, the, the other challenge of working with your spouse is that you can't always get the same support from your spouse that you might be able to get from uh, your spouse if they weren't your coworker. So, for example, I cannot come home and complain about the jerk that I share the office with and the annoying thing that she did angry typer that's still sitting next to me eating dinner. <laughs> and, and even when the issue doesn't involve your spouse, you know, sometimes you just want to come home and say, I am so frustrated about this thing that happened at work today, but it's her problem too. And so there's no unbiased, disinterested listener. It triggers her emotions around it as well. And so there are just certain things that you can't have. And that's, that's kind of what so we talked a lot about challenges, and there are plenty, but it's not all challenges. Um, you know, when it's working, which is most of the time, it, it, it's really rewarding and really fulfilling for us to have been able to build this business together and, and to share in this. And you know, for us, our skill sets are very complementary. 
know, she's good at what I'm terrible at, I'm good at what she's terrible at. That's why our marriage works. And so now that we've navigated some of these speed bumps, it's also, it's also a big part of why our business relationship works. And I would have to say that, you know, it's a lot of work to stay in that 15%. And sometimes a sense of humor is really, as you hopefully can pick up that Matt and I at least laugh together in the midst of all this. But, you know, sometimes a t-shirt says it all. And when you put your t-shirt on, we know we're not gonna talk about anything tonight. So really, it's all about that. <laughs> Thank you.